the Marley Bird YouTube channel. This is video two of a four part series of videos I'm doing to make the snow day crochet mittens. By this point, you've completed two cuffs, one for each one of your mittens, and you're ready to move on to make the palm of the mitten and to prep for your thumb hole. In case you've lost that pattern, I've put a link to it in the video description box right down there below. Remember, it is a free pattern. And while you're down there, smash that like button, as my kids say, to let other people know you enjoyed this video. Go ahead, grab your cuffs, which should still be attached to the yarn, and your hook, and let's go ahead and jump in with the next set of instructions. The last time I saw you, this is where I left you. We had just finished this cute little cuff, and we're ready to move on to the palm. The first round for the palm of your mitten is actually just a series of slip stitches into each row of the cuff. If you did the correct number of rows on your cuff, you will end up with either 20, 24, or 26 total slip stitches. Because we are going to transition from working rows, which we did in the cuff, to working in the round for the mitten, we will join with an invisible join. Let's begin with the slip stitches. We do not chain one. We will simply go into the end of each row and work a slip stitch, which we know how to do because we just completed those as we were making the cuff. Go ahead and complete your entire round of slip stitches. Once you have completed an entire round of slip stitches, we are going to do an invisible join. So go ahead and grab your scissors and cut a tail that is at least six inches long. Thread that tail onto your bent tip tapestry needle. Oops, don't thread it on there yet. Pull this tail all the way through your stitch first. Now we wanna thread it onto our tapestry needle. Sorry about that. So thread this onto your bent tip tapestry needle now. And then working through both legs of the first stitch we did, so we're gonna work through both legs, we will pull that tail through that, okay? Now we're gonna come back and working through the center of the last slip stitch we did, we pull that needle right down through the center and it makes it so it's an invisible join. On the inside of our fabric, you can see here, I'm gonna turn this inside out so it's easier to see. We have this nice slip stitch seam that we did to join our cuff. So I can go ahead and weave my tail in right now, just down that slip stitch seam of the cuff. And I'm gonna go the entire way because these mittens are for kids, right? So you don't want it to come undone. So I'm gonna go all the way down and then I will just come back up a little ways because these are gonna get a lot of tugging on them, right? So we wanna make sure the tail doesn't come undone. And then I'll come back down. That makes it so that that tail has a long way to go before it gets pulled out. Once it's all woven in, you can go ahead and snip that tail off. I put it right side out again and we're ready to move on to round two. Now that we're finished with color A, we wanna go ahead and join with our color B. So we grab our color B and working into that first stitch, okay, so that's our first stitch here, we wanna go ahead and join with a slip stitch. So I'm going to put my hook through that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through that loop. So that is joining with a slip stitch. Now I will chain two, one, two, and this counts as our first half double crochet. So I'm gonna take a stitch marker, you can use the same ones that you used on the cuff, and I am placing that stitch marker on the chain behind the loop on my hook. Now what I wanna go ahead and do is work a half double crochet into each slip stitch all the way around the cuff. So I'm working through both legs here and I'm working a half double crochet. Both legs and a half double crochet.
Go ahead and work half double crochets into each slip stitch all the way around your work. As you complete your final half double crochet, you will then finish by working a slip stitch into the second chain you created. We marked that stitch already, that chain, so we can go ahead and I can remove that marker just so it's easier to get into that stitch. Work directly into that chain and join with a slip stitch, right like so. I still have the same number of stitches as I did after I finished round one, although now my stitches are all half double crochets. Let's go ahead and move on to round three. For round three, we begin with the chain two. And remember that chain two counts as our first half double crochet. So I will go ahead and place my marker into that second chain just like I did before. Now I want to work half double crochets all the way around this round working in the back loop only. If this first stitch counts as a half double, I do not want to put a stitch into that one right there. I want to start my first one over here. So working in the back loop only, I will work a half double crochet. And I will continue doing that all the way around my work. When you complete your final half double crochet, don't forget to join with a slip stitch to that marked stitch so I could take that marker out and join with a slip stitch into that marked stitch. And I've completed my round three. You repeat round three either three times for the smallest size, four times for the medium size, or five times for the large size. Once you've completed all of the rounds you need to do for the palm, it's time for the thumb opening. In this video, we're gonna follow the instructions for the right hand. I really feel like once you know how to do the right hand, you could follow along the instructions for the left hand for your second mitten. Let's go ahead and jump in. We wanna start off with the chain two, which counts as our half double crochet, just like we have been counting all along. So I'm gonna mark that so that I have it marked. Working in the back loops only, I'm going to half double crochet. I'm going to skip the first one. I'll half double crochet in the next two stitches. So one and two. Now I will chain either five or six depending on the size you're making. For me, I'm doing six. I'm going to confirm that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I will skip the number of chains that I did, I'm going to skip that same number of stitches. So for me, it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So working into the next one, so that one there, I will start my half double crochets again. So I, I chained six and I'm skipping six, okay? Once I've done that, I will now half double crochet all of the way around my mitten back to my beginning point. After you've completed your last half double crochet, you join with a slip stitch into that chain two that we've marked all along just like before, and that particular portion of your mitten is complete. You now have a space for your thumb. The only difference between the right hand thumb opening and the left hand thumb, op thumb opening is the side that you're putting the thumb opening. For the right hand, we have our chain two, which counts as a stitch, and then two stitches right here, and then we have a thumb opening. For the left hand, you actually would work around until you get to this point, chain stitches, and then rejoin maybe right here, and then work three half double crochets before you join. So that would make your thumb opening over here instead of over here. Pretty simple stuff. All of this is pretty straightforward. Go ahead and complete the right hand palm and thumb opening, then work the left hand palm and thumb opening. Once those two mittens are complete, join me in video three for the top of the mitten. So we will make the full mitten without the thumb. The thumb is the very last video we do. It might seem sort of silly, but most patterns have the thumb as the very last thing you complete. So go ahead and complete your mittens and join me back here for video three. 
Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.